You're in control, is there anywhere you wanna go? You're in control, is there anything you wanna know? The future's for discovering The space in which we travel in Research it says that the uh, name originated somewhere in Norfolk, but um, a lot of the history is traced back to this town of Chilton. Um, there's a church that I'm going to go visit, uh, St. Mary, um, and I am meeting with uh, one of the people that has a key to the inside of the church. Her name is Valerie Herbert, and um, we'll see. I'm meeting her after lunch. Should be inside. Get to see inside. Now, um, I didn't have a printer, so I wrote down the family tree um, as we have it so far before I left. Um, I started it back at where the C R A I N spelling was reported to have changed from the C R A N E spelling. Um, if you go down here where I've drawn the little the little boats, these are the names of the cranes that um, are, uh, supposedly came over um, in about um, 1634, 1633, or some, somewhere around there. Um, if you go back, uh, Vincent Crane, you see his um, location of origin was Suffolk. Um, same was for his father, John Crane, and I found reference to his brother, uh, uh, Robert Crane Esquire, um, being in the town of um, Chilton. So if you go back one more generation, um, that's where the first recorded um, reference of our line, Robert Crane Esquire, being in Chilton. Uh, the line goes down, you can see John Crane, Joseph Crane, Robert, I think uh, I've heard, I've seen references to his full name being John Robert, um, Marcus, Leland, Charles, and then the last reference that I can find is a feral crane uh, in, who was born in 1255 with no recorded death date. Uh, there's nothing before him, um, and from there, our line, um, we went back further from Elizabeth to Warren, and that's how we traced our line back to um, uh, William, Sir William the Conqueror. Um, so, we'll see if any of the stuff that I find today um, holds up or um, causes some discrepancies with this. Is there? Yes. So, 
one of our, big, our biggest industries, silk. Silk, so, really? Yes, silk, really. Shepherd Barker wears our silk. And uh, he made the wedding dresses, coronation dresses for the royals. Wow. For the royal palaces, we do the furnishing silk that goes on the walls. Pounds of meter jobs, you know, very, very skilled. It's jacquard silks, you know, they're woven where the pattern is woven in. Mm -hmm. Under the surface, trying to break through. So we are on the path right now to St. Mary's Church, and uh, from what I understand there used to be a whole medieval village around here and there's questions as to what happened to it. Is that the case? I was asking you. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no, nobody knows when it, when it went, but there's certainly evidence of it has been found over the um, over the years, the agricultural land, and of course there was all sorts of um, people from the 12th, 13th century came up. But just to the left here, they did a, a big dig at the county council in um, the 1980s, mm -hmm. and in fact there's an Iron Age site there, about two and a half thousand years old. Wow. Which is not surprising, you see, they often built the church where there had been habitation mm -hmm. because it blotted it out the Christian ethics took over a bit like you know um, taking over holly and ivy and all those sort of things wow well, here it is Bent on the churches, and this is one of them. No electricity, which is why there are candles and lamps, and no running water. One bell that was cast in the Died in 1500. Is that a dragon? What is that? Oh, a sheep? Unicorn. Unicorn. Mm -hmm. Huh. Sign of purity. So the oh. Hi, Uncle Robert. What's wonderful to see the armor. We know. Historians know from tombs like this is called a chest tomb hmm. exactly what the armor was like. Wow. 
at that time. And you see, that's the period where he had, where, you remember Henry V, the hair was all very short, wasn't right, it? Right, right. It's got longer again there. The buckles. Yes, <laughs> de detail like the buckles. I mean, graffiti is not one of this, some graffiti, it looks seven, 1770 something. Wow. So graffiti is not a particularly modern. Yeah, I think no matter what year, people feel that they need to There's the prove crane, that they were here. The crane coat of arms. Oh, wow. And what and are these other ones? That's the crane, and that's the Ogard star. So that indicates husband and wife. Oh, okay. And then her descent is, um, that's her Ogard, and I forget what the other one is. Other and this is his two wives then? Is um, that true? Or? No, it was the other one who had, oh, had okay. two wives. No. Her name was Anne and she's wearing what looks like rather an elaborate necklace, and it is. And known, it's known as the SS. It's a, a livery collar, called a livery collar. And <laughs> that shows that she was for the Lancastrians, you know, about the Lancastrians of the, of the great battle for, between the Lancastrians for the supremacy when, when Henry, the first of the Henrys, took over and Richard III was killed at Bosworth Field. Mm -hmm. she, the, the, Sir Andrew actually was very close to the reigning queen at the time and it's quite possible that before marriage that she was a, a lady-in-waiting in the court Wow. But he was very close, her father, to the royal court. And these, of course, would have been highly coloured. And you'll see where remnant last. This is alabaster. You'll see the little remnants of paint there. If you look at her headdress, it's called a box headdress. Oh, yeah. You see, it's sort of rather like a jacquard. It would have been embroidered. Yeah, I could see the detail. Detail work. Mm -hmm. And who's the, uh, the little guy over there without the hands? Yes, we'll go around looking the other side. That's, that's their, survive, their son who died when he was young, mm -hmm. which is why it went to his brother, the estate. She, um, this is, it's difficult to see, but that he's, he's wearing the crane, the crane um, yeah, the coat badge of there, yes, yes, on his shoulder. This is his surcoat. Um, a, med a medievalist came, and I took him round the church, and I, said, I asked him about these little holes in the toes. And I'd, oh. always, I'd always been intrigued by those. He said, oh, simple, he said. That's where the blood and the urine runs out. Oh. In battle. And so I, I noticed, well, that's interesting. Oh, in battle. They really went... That far into detail with the... Oh, yes, you um, see. But um, subsequently I, dis I discovered that it's nothing to do with blood and urine. <laughs> it would have been a, two leather um, tapes coming out of there, not tapes, but um, leather ties coming out of there. And they would have been tied under the foot because this is articulated, as you can see, mm -hmm. so there's nothing under the foot at all. So when you walked, it would have gone... <laughs> you would have, it would have just been on your foot. There was nothing to keep it. It would have clanked, wouldn't it? Almost. Yeah. So that's the explanation. Very, okay. Very down to earth. <laughs> that's more so reasonable. Story. You can see at her foot there, there's the remains of her little dog. No, she has a dog. Yes, come to it, can you see? You can just see its tail. You see the tail there. Yeah. And often they had their feet on a dog. It was sort of the fidelity image. Hmm. Yeah. And round here there would have been a brass strip originally, saying who they were and mm -hmm. so on, but the, these things were lost. This mm. is his helm or helmet. 
It would have had plumes, see, lovely red, that would have been silk rolled in a row around it. And what was her name again? I'm sorry? What was her name again? Anne. Anne, Anne O'Gard. Anne O'Gard. It was her second marriage. an epitaph there, which is a bit obscure, but I like the end of it. It says, least that thou a statue be, with amazement like to me, if thou readest with eyes dry, thou a marble art, not I. Wow. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> yes, that's her father, Sir Henry Hobart of Blickley. Lord Chief Justice of the Common Pleas, who lived with her husband in great love and amity for 17 years and willingly yielded up this life in expectation of better. Lent's Day of April 1624. Now he put up this monument to her, and at the same time, it cost 50 pounds. It was done by Gerard Christmas, who was a famous artificer at the time, who, when they had the great court um, masks and balls and so on, he was the one who devised the floats when they went floating in and all these sort of things <laughs> happened, and the big archways that were put over the streets for big occasions. Uh, but uh, uh, he, within months of her death, he was wealthy, he was late thirties, no children, and he married this lass here, Susan Allington, who came from a very prolific family. Her grandfather was Lord Burley, who was Elizabeth's um, treasurer and chief minister. So she had very good connections, and they say they had ten children. And she died after him and she married him, she remarried. But amazingly, nobody, although he died so wealthy, with his four daughters, nobody bothered to put his name or her name on not the slate. Not afterwards. even the names. Yes, extraordinary, isn't it? It's amazing that... And their daughters we... married into the Walpoles and in that way became great-grandparents of our first Prime Minister, Sir Robert Walpole. They married into the heirs of Norfolk, of Stoke Bardolph in Norfolk, another great landowning family. Uh, who was the other one? Oh, it's Bacon, Sir Robert Bacon, who's, who's um, Sir Edmund Bacon, she married her. His grandfather had been keeper of the Great Seal. That's one of the most important posts in the land, the Great Seal, National Seal, you know. Mm.
before Sir Robert actually lived here. I mean, the one on the two lived here. Lived, at the, yes, at the house. Uh-huh. And the one on the chest, too. It's very confusing because they won't call Robert. So Robert 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. And who actually built it? Built the house. Who built the house? Was it uh, one of the Sir Roberts? Robert Crane's grandfather. Okay. I just wanted you to oh. see it as you come yeah, out. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow. And how long did you live here for? Uh, my husband, the, the, the Herbert family, lived here for 75 years. I only oh, lived here for 10. Mm -hmm. This is Chilton Hall. This house was built by Sir Robert Crane's grandfather, also named Robert Crane. 1540. About 1540 it was built. And Kenny, this is for you. The house has a moat around it. And fish! Big fish. Okay, just to follow up on this, I've been doing some research here. I'm, I'm recording a video. Nice. Say hello. <laughs> um, found some discrepancies with the official tree here. I'm supposed to be descended from this guy here, but doesn't look like that's true. So we have some major research to do. Mr. John here, I need to find out where he came from. Well, um, it's almost 7.30 and um, that's the end of the evening. Uh, today was wonderful. I couldn't have imagined um, nicer company. Uh, Valerie took me to her home, I met her husband. Uh, they just have a wealth of knowledge, and uh, they were just the nicest, nicest people. Um, it was incredible to see, you know, if not um, actual uh, ancestors, but people from the the Crane line. Um, the only thing that was a disappointment was the discrepancies with the with the pedigree, but um, it only gives me more to work on, so um, I'll be posting uh, the information that I found, so hopefully uh, f fellow cranes can help me get to the bottom of the genealogy. Thank you. Bye. Stuck in square